inspections, right? What kind of a podcast topic is that? But I was at a closing last week, and one of the obligatory forms in our closing packages is um, an acknowledgement that a radon gas inspection has not been done, right? So think about it in my marketplace. We don't do radon inspections because we have no basements, right? We're at sea level. And so the, the, this form uh, just made me think about the fact that people coming from other areas are sometimes surprised at uh, what inspections are or aren't done. Then we started brainstorming, Jack, you and I on text and, and through the, the Google Drive, and I realized just how deep that was. So let's talk first, kind of set the stage. What are the, the ordinary inspections that, that you see done? And we'll, we'll trade off and see which are in your market and which are in mine and which are in both. Well, you, you mentioned radon. That's very common in our market. Um, we, have, we don't necessarily have a lot of basement homes, but we do have a lot of crawl space homes. Um, and then we have quite a few uh, walkout basements. In other words, daylight basements where it's kind of rolling topography and, um, and it creates a basement space. So yeah, radon's a big deal here. And for the listeners who may not be familiar with radon, it's a carcinogen. It's a gas that um, emanates from the soil and it tends to be concentrated in certain pockets of the country. And this is one of those areas where there is a lot of radon. And, and it's interesting too, because it tends to concentrate in certain areas of a given market. Um, it's so prevalent in our area that a lot of the builders um, do passive radon systems um, preemptively, and some of the counties in our area actually require it as part of codes to put a passive system in. And that's basically a piping between the walls and electrical, so that basically if you ever do a radon test and the gas is identified, um, then you can simply uh, add the fan to it and it makes the system active. So uh, that's a very common test in the market. Yeah, and and I hear that a lot from people coming from other parts of the country. But interestingly, so Florida, you think Florida is all the same. Most people do. But just a couple of hours south of us, they do radon inspections because they have an awful lot of quarries just oh, yeah. inland from the coast. And and so so it's ordinary there. So even just a couple of hours difference can make uh, a, a big change. And also... I've heard from some luxury agents that that really large homes that have an awful lot of granite or stone, that that type of material, that they will do them there because just the quantity of those materials can actually uh, leach some of that. Have you have you encountered that with a, with a, a really large property with a lot of that? No, that's the first I've heard that actually. It's interesting. Hmm. It is. It is. So I think in most markets, everybody has the general inspection, right? The, the, the regular home inspection, and they, they go through and do things. But there's, there's some other inspections that happen. For example, four-point insurance inspections are critical in my marketplace. Florida is one of those spots where the insurance companies would love to never write another homeowner's insurance policy in the state again. So they have implemented a requirement for, for this, what's called the four point, which is the, the roof, the AC, the plumbing, and the electricity, right? So warranting that those items are all um, in order and they have some requirements um, about types of wiring, for example, and the, the age requirement on the roof. So that's something that is absolutely required in my market. But Jack, you said you'd never heard of one. No, well, not in that, not that terminology. Mm. Um, I think it's interesting too, just off topic slightly, you know, we're talking about all these, you know, less typical inspections. It's very interesting that during 2021, and the first half of 2022, when so many markets across the country were experiencing this surge, you know, of, of uh, buyers and this rush when the interest rates were so low, um, a lot of buyers were waiving inspections altogether. Um, to make their offers more competitive and more attractive to sellers. Um, so I'm, I'm curious to see what's going to happen in a few years as um, people start discovering some of the latent defects that might be present in some of those homes where those types of transactions occur. That'll be very you, interesting. You are absolutely right. And that just, that frightened me when that happened, that people were willing to 
um, to waive inspections. There was one house in particular. I had sellers who had lost a number of uh, of deals. They were million dollar buyers, and they so desperately wanted uh, a house, right? That they were trying to figure out how they could fit a square peg in a round hole. And there was one old, probably a hundred year old uh, Mediterranean home that we walked into. We walked in the front door, and I could smell the mold. Mm. Right, I can smell yeah. that. I'm, I have yeah. one of those sensitive sniffers, right? And the the husband said, I, "I don't smell anything." And I'm like, "You cannot buy this home without having an inspection, right?" It did, and they were so disappointed. But absolutely, was there was no way that I was going to let them uh, to do that. But we also saw a lot of people doing pre inspections oh, during absolutely. that time, especially in the the, the luxury market. So that at least a a buyer had the opportunity to review a report, even if they didn't order it, uh, to have a better sense. And yeah, so you know, that- we did. Yeah, what we did was so interesting. Uh, we we got so frustrated um, with these multiple offer situations during that time period that we would actually bring the home inspector to a lot of our uh, private home tours because the buyers were so intent this was going to be the house. If they wanted to make an offer, they wanted the home inspector to do a basic overall inspection. And they weren't checking every window and every outlet, but checking the major things like the mechanical, mm-hmm. the roof, mm-hmm. plumbing, you know, the, the air conditioning, et cetera, the, the big things, the big ticket items. So that was another thing that we dealt with during that time period. Tammy, you were talking about um, insurance. Another interesting, it's not so much an inspection as a due diligence, but it's closely related. And that's uh, a loss history report. Um, years ago, I think this was referred to in the insurance industry as a clue report, right? An acronym. And I don't even know what it stood for. I don't remember. But loss history reports are used um, universally with insurance companies across the country, so that if you go to get home insurance, for example, um, and you're using State Farm, State Farm will pull the history on that particular house with the various insurance companies it may have been, uh, you know, covered by previously. And they look for claims that have been made on that property. That's a very interesting report to get to. And your luxury home buyers are more sophisticated buyers, typically, and they know to ask about this. And really, all buyers should ask about it. But they can look at that report. They can get it pulled uh, by their insurance company and see if any claims have been made in that house. Now, the reality is there could have been things in that home like flooding or lightning or fires or who knows what that weren't necessarily, um, that wouldn't necessarily turn up in that report because the the homeowner had to make a claim. Right. But in most cases, homeowners do make claims. And if you have a homeowner that either one simply doesn't know about the history of the home, they may not know there was a fire in the home at one point in time. Yep. Or two, uh, worse, that perhaps they did know, but they're not properly disclosing what they do know. Right. That report is a great tool for home inspectors because it gives them a footprint to say, hey, I want to really check out the attic because there was a fire here in 1992. And I want to make sure that there was no damage to electrical electrical components or systems or what have you. So yeah, it's a real assistant assistance. To so, home. Jack, that makes me think of in in our market area, a little further north uh, than my core area. There has been a lot of, um, I hate to say it out loud, sinkhole activity, right? Because yeah. that's just like the buzzword. Sure. And there were a lot of folks when this was happening that were making claims and getting huge payouts and then not doing the work. Right. right? Now, obviously, if there's an active sinkhole in your front yard and you're on the evening news, then that's going to be something. Uh, but everybody was going after these, um, you know, these insurance claims. And so that's one of the things that... Uh, that can trigger the need to look and see if they've got documentation that they actually did repairs. So. Yeah, and more, and more commonly, at least in, more commonly in our market, Tammy, you know, if you look at that, that report and you see where a claim is, was made perhaps a couple of years earlier on a roof and you look with a home inspector and the home inspector says, hey, this roof looks to be, you know, 10, 15, 20 years old or whatever, and yet the homeowner made a claim and got, compensated for a new roof, that gives you, you know, some ammo when you go into your negotiations on repairs when it comes to the condition of that roof that they didn't have replaced. Yeah, that's a good point. And that also that also makes me um, think about the the note that you made about dueling inspectors. And uh, 
buyers, especially in the upper tier that are pretty savvy, uh, they may come at it from a different perspective. Tell me what you mean by dueling inspectors. Well, we've seen this a few times through the years. It's really wonderful that the first time I experienced it, it kind of scared me, to be honest. We had a, a home buyer who was purchasing, uh, it was an older historic home um, here in Brentwood, and it was actually located just across the street from, at the time, Tim McGraw and Faith Hill's home. Um, theirs was a newer home. The one that we uh, represented the buyer on was an historic home. And so our client, who has become a lifelong client, um, wanted to, he asked for our toughest home inspectors, and he chose two. And so I told my business partner, I said, well, this deal is dead. He's trying to <laughs> find a way to get out of the deal. We haven't got into it all the way yet. Um, and it was interesting because he took the two stacks of documents when he printed them out and he did like a comparative analysis, essentially, of all the repairs or potential repairs, the defects, looked through all of it and said, OK, I'll buy it as is. And so he wasn't trying to nickel and dime, so to speak, the seller on a bunch of line item repairs on an older home. He simply wanted to know what he was buying. I thought it was a terrific strategy. Just making sure you're protecting your assets. Yeah, I, I think that that's absolutely fantastic. 